Hello everyone, it's me, Miss Nicole, or Nicole, whichever you prefer to call me, and welcome to another Interactive Fiction Adventure Club. Uh, we are going to be doing A Journey Under the Sea, uh, and this one is a Choose Your Own Adventure. This one is actually the second Choose Your Own Adventure. Um, it's a reprint of one of the other ones. So we if this is your first time um this isn't a story that we read cover to cover we read to a certain point and then we have to make a decision and since you're not here to help me make that decision i'm going to use this if we end up on one three and five we'll go with the top choice if we end up on two four and six we'll go with the bottom choice so let's get started in our undersea adventure Beware and warning. This book is different from other books. You and you alone are in charge of what happens in this story. There are dangers, choices, adventures, and consequences. You must use all of your numerous talents and much of your enormous intelligence. The wrong decision could end in disaster, even death. But don't despair. At any time, you can go back and make another choice. Alter the path of your story and change its results. Now enter the mysterious and beautiful world of Atlantis. You may become famous. You might decide never to return to Earth, the Earth world above you. Or you may not get a chance to make that decision. Whatever happens, good luck. You are a deep sea explorer searching for the famed lost city of Atlantis. This is your most challenging and dangerous mission. Fear and excitement are now your companions. It is the morning and the sun pushes you up on the pushes up on the horizon. The sea is calm. You climb into a narrow pilot's compartment of the underwater vessel Seeker with your special gear. The crew of the research vessel Murray screws down the hatch clamps. Now begins the plunge into the depths of the ocean. The Seeker crew begins lowering by the strong but thin cable. Within minutes, you are deep in the ocean that, with that little light filters down to you. The silence is airy, and as the Seeker slips deeper and deeper, you pair out of the thick glass porthole and see the strange white fish dry, drifting past, some stopping, sometimes stopping and looking at you, an intruder from another world. The cable attached to you is the marae is extended to its limit. You have come to rest on a ledge near the canyon in the ocean floor, uh, floor <clears throat> that the ancient myth says leads to the lost city of Atlantis. You have an experimental diving suit designed to protect you from the intense pressure of the deep oh, you should be able to leave the seeker and explore the sea bottom. The new suit contains a number of the latest microprocessors, enabling a variety of useful functions. It even has a built-in waterproof smart tablet with laser communicator. You can cut loose from the cable. The seeker is self-propelled. You are now in another world. Remember, this is a dangerous world, an unknown world. As agreed, you signal the marae. All systems go. It's awesome down here. So we have two choices. If we decide to explore the ledge where your seeker comes to rest, we could turn to one page. If we decide to cut loose and dive into the canyon of the ocean floor, we turn to another. So let's roll the die and see. Okay, so we have got a five. So we are going to explore the ledge where we landed. Your dive suit is a tight fit takes you some time to put on. Finally, you slip from the airlock of the seeker and stand on the ocean floor. It is a strange and marvelous world where you are, every move is slowed down. You begin the exploration with your halogen searchlight. The ledge hanging over the deep canyon is your starting point. A strange feeling overcomes you, part warning, part terror. Then you see it. The seeker is in the grips of the huge monster. It is similar to the squid, but it's enormous. The seeker is just a toy in its long, powerful tentacles. You seek shelter, for rock, shelter behind a rock formation, knowing your spare gun you carry it will be useless against the monster. It looks as though it will destroy the seeker. Fish of all sizes huddle with you in an attempt to escape the monster. I'm going to show you the picture. Yeah, that's it. So are we gonna stay hidden uh, close to the seeker or are we gonna try to escape and hope a rescue? We got to one, so we're gonna try to stay hidden close to the seeker. 
The giant squid tosses and turns the seeker, but you finally, the but finally the creature grows tired of its new game and jets off with an enormous squirt of water. You now are free to leave your hiding place and examine the seeker for damage. To your dismay, the airlock entrance has been jammed shut. You are locked out of the seeker. The crew of the Marae, however, suspected trouble when it when you didn't respond to a routine radio check-in. They are now lowering an escape platform. Once you're on the platform, you radio them to start pulling pull the surface. To avoid the deadly bends, rapid expansion of nitrogen bubbles in your blood, they will bring you up slowly. Just as the platform begins to move, the giant squid suddenly reappears, and it's headed directly to you. If we're going to decide to fight the squid with your spear, a gun, or the other choice is we decide to signal an array to pull you up to top speed, knowing that you will get the bends. We'll see. You have a four, so that means we're going to go with the bottom choice. We're going to tell the array to pull us up top speed. We're going to risk getting the bends. As they begin the rapid hauling, you lose your ability to function in the deep. Dizziness overcomes you and your arms and legs feel weak. You lose your hold of your platform and drift into the water exhausted. Surprisingly, you see a dolphin headed right towards you. These marvelous mammals sometimes helps it help people in trouble. Will it help you? Are we going to try to get help from the dolphin or are we going to carry on alone swimming to the surface? We'll see. We got a four, so we're going to go with the bottom choice, and we're going to carry on alone trying to swim. The dolphin might help you, um, and might not. You decide to chant it alone, so you go up, swimming towards the surface. The dolphin follows you for some time, then swims off. You rest for a while, about 300 feet below the surface, before you f your final ascent. A huge, ugly fish swarms towards you, its bulging eyes fastened on you. It's a mola mola and spans more than 16 feet in width. It's a fish that does not bother, does not bother to bite its uh, victims. It swallows them whole. It looks as though you're its next meal, the end. All right, so that was one ending and we have time for more, but gosh, um, get me in whole. That's not how we want to do it. So let's see what happens if instead of trying to swim up by ourselves, we try to get help from the dolphin. So let's, that would have been uh, page 34 instead. The dolphin looks at you, and you even imagine he's smiling at you. You grab one of his flippers with a powerful switch of his body, the dolphin swims upwards. In a short time, you break through the surface. You blink in the bright sun. The moray is nowhere in sight. You are lost far at sea. The dolphin dies beneath the surface with you, still clinging to him. He speeds off. And within 20 minutes, you're next to the Marae. The dolphin must have heard the Marae's engine under the water. Once aboard, everyone congratulates you on your escape. You will go down, oh, you will go down again, but the thoughts keep haunting you. What if the luck has run out? Do we decide to run, dive again, or decide to give up on the expedition? Uh, we have a two. We're going to go down again. All right. Again, the seeker is lowered <laughs> over the sea, um, over the side of the moray and slips into the ocean. Fish swim by, peering cautiously at you in your titanium and ceramic shell. The sunlight fades as you descend into the abyss. You are headed to one of the giant canyons below that might lead to Atlantis. When you reach the canyon, you switch onto seeker's searchlight. Immediately, you spot a round hole that appears to be made by intelligent beings. Perhaps it leads to the Atlantis. You pilot the seeker through the rounded entrance to the grotto. Once inside, your searchlight picks up what appears to be docks and pairs in the grotto walls. The seeker searchlight is not very powerful. However, you do have a special laser light which will lead to up to the grotto will light up the grotto like daylight. Unfortunately, the laser light can only be used twice for very short periods before it's recharged on the needs to be recharged more than uh, on the meringue. Now more than 2,000 feet above you. If you decide to use the laser light, or we're going to try to cruise further into the grotto. We got a three, so we're going to try to use the laser light. The beam from the laser light illuminates the entire grotto. Far back on the floor, the grotto is a submarine 
Cautiously, you maneuver the seeker closer. It's the submarine that mysteriously disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle almost a year before. The Bermuda Triangle is more than 20,000 miles away. How did the sub get here? It doesn't appear to ha be damaged, but it's covered in slimy algae. Beautiful fish swim around it as though it's very own prize. Then you notice the main hatch is free of algae. Do we enter the submarine or we decide to cruise on through the grotto, ignoring the sub for now? Okay, we got a four. So we're going to go with the bottom choice. We're going to decide we're going to cruise uh, on and we're going to ignore the submarine for now. You cruise through the grotto past the wreck of the submarine. There's another shipwreck and another and then another. They too are covered with algae and they also appear undamaged. The baby people from Atlantis capture the ships in the Bermuda Triangle and bring them here. There are, in, is a three-mast schooner, a type of vessel of the early 1800s. Its, rigged and it's, festooned with, um, its rigging is festooned with algae, and the fish just swim lazily around it. Your curiosity captures you, and you put your diving suit on, leaving the seeker. You move towards the old sailing ship. Suddenly, a 13-foot-long, deadly, poisonous sea snake strikes from behind the forward cabin and bites you into the soft flesh between the fingers of your right hand. There's no antidote to this deadly poison. The neurotoxin spreads like a wave uh, up your forearm on its way to your cerebral cortex. Your life has been short and sweet. Farewell, brave one. The end. All right, and that's going to be it uh, for the, for this reading. We read it twice, and we, we came to two endings, uh, and we died, both of them. But there are 40 other endings. So altogether, there are 40 uh, two endings in this book. So we've explored two of them. I would highly suggest for you to check this out and explore more, and I'll see you at some other point. Bye.